a creature known as a harbinger of death, an omen of devastation, the bringer of destruction and calamity. But we know it as the Mothman. Never seen anything like it. I hope I never do again. Those eyes. That's all she'd ever say was those eyes. We just didn't, we couldn't believe what we really saw. This thing was standing there, but it had a body. It was like a man. You could see the muscles in its legs. You and your friends are having a night out on the town when the evening is coming to a close. So you all pile into the car and head back home. You're on the road when you see something very unusual. This unknown creature that has been spotted before horrific events, such as the collapse of the Silver Bridge and the smoke during the terrorist attack on September 11th. What is this mysterious creature? And is it really a sign of something horrible to come? We'll explore all of these possibilities and more today on Adventure, Explore, Discover, as we look into the mystery of the Mothman. On November 15th of 1966, Dickie and Linda Maxwell, along with Steve and Mary Mallet, reported to the local police a creature that they had seen. It was about seven feet tall with white wings. They described the creature as a slender, muscular man. When asked about the appearance of its face, they replied that they were unable to see any details due to the hypnotic nature of the glowing red eyes. After having spotted this odd creature, they sped off in their car as fast as they could. And for unknown reasons, this slender, muscular creature jumped into the air and flew after them. It continued following them while making loud screeching sounds until they made it to the Point Pleasant city limits. This would be one of the first sightings of the Mothman. In the days that followed, this creature's story was being printed in the local paper, and other people in the area reported similar sightings. Two volunteer firemen had said they had seen it as well, and that it was a large bird with big red eyes. The sheriff of Mason County, George Johnson, didn't believe in the hokey superstitions and claimed that it was probably all due to an unusually large heron. But herons don't grow to over seven feet tall. And unless I miss something, they don't have arms like the first sighting depicted either. Now the firemen may have been mistaken, but what about the first couples? Did they see a seven foot tall heron with arms? These aren't even the first people to have seen the Mothman. And its name itself is very misleading, but I'll get to that in a minute. In the same year, but a month earlier, Two grave diggers were working in the middle of the night as they saw a massive black figure fly over their heads. They didn't realize what it was and ultimately didn't feel the need to say much at first. But they are the first people to have seen the Mothman. The next year in 1967, the Mothman was seen again in December and the sighting varies. Some say he was flying over the bridge while others claim to have seen it sitting atop the silver bridge. The Silver Bridge was a suspension bridge over the Ohio River that connected Point Pleasant, West Virginia to Gallipolis, Ohio. And after this unknown being was seen at the Silver Bridge, it collapsed and 46 people died. People speculate saying that the Mothman was the cause of the collapse and that it was because of the creature that a fracture in the suspension chain was there in the first place. But what if the Mothman isn't the horrid monster that we're told he is? What if he was actually there to bring attention to a fault in the bridge's suspension chain? What if he was there to alarm the public of what was about to happen? Because despite the Mothman being spotted before the collapse of the Silver Bridge and inside the smoke of the Twin Towers in the 9-11 terrorist attack, he has had a very positive impact on the economy of the little town of Point Pleasant. Brittany Sayer is an employee at the Mothman Museum, and this is what she had to say about it. When we have the festival, it can be upwards of 10,000 people visiting. You'll be on Main Street, and it's packed. You cannot move on the street. We have people go two or three hours out of their way just to stop here. So that's really cool. For most people, Mothman is their main reason for visiting. Before Mothman, it was pretty much dead. Even when I was growing up, Main Street was empty. And now, we've got shops in the buildings and people are coming in and it's thriving again, thank goodness. So a lot of people are glad about that. Whatever this Mothman creature is, it seems to not only be considered a harbinger of destruction and death, but also the reason that this little town has had life restored to it. 
Had the Mothman never appeared, there's no telling how this town would have dealt with things. It has really breathed life into this tiny town of 4,000 people. So what could this creature have been? Well, a lot of skeptics claim that this was a bird, and this is one of those things that I just have to call bull. Bull Loney. Everything is always explained away as, oh, it was a barred owl because they have big, huge eyes that glow red when light is shined on them. Or it was a crane that has red patches around its eyes. Here is the issue that everyone ignores when they try to pretend to know what something is when it's clear that they don't. I see this with other explanations too, not just Mothman. The dimensions of what the Mothman has been reported as does not match a crane nor a bird at all. So let me put it to you like this. Let's say you're watching a scary movie where there's a monster, like a werewolf. Not only does a werewolf have shoulders, walk upright, have a deep low howl and is much bigger than a wolf or a bear, but all the characters in the movies always say, it wasn't a werewolf, it was probably a bear or a big wolf. And that's what people do to these creatures. They write them off as something explainable because people can't stand when something can't be explained. Humanity tries to put everything into a box and when something doesn't fit, they change that something so that way it makes sense. Some people have said it followed their car while they were driving 100 miles per hour. Do you really think that an owl or a crane can consistently keep up with a vehicle moving that fast horizontally? That don't make no sense. Diving speed is one thing, but going from standing still on the ground to chasing a speeding car is entirely different. Furthermore, why would an owl or crane be chasing a car in the first place? These cranes are around three feet tall with a six foot wingspan. So they're large, but there's no way that a person is going to be sitting in a car and see a three foot tall crane and imagine one, it has broad shoulders like a man, two, is six to seven feet tall, and three, started chasing their car. It's just one of the most insulting things to hear. You're taking this experience that four people had and belittling it by essentially saying, I was not there, but I know what you saw better than you know what you saw. Now, would I say that this was a real bird of sorts? No, because based on the description that they all gave at separate interviews, it's incredibly ridiculous. It's like saying, hey, I saw this awesome thing on the highway. It had two wheels and no doors, but then someone saying, you probably just saw a car from one side with the window open. There's no such thing as a two wheeled vehicle with no doors. I really just find that type of behavior extremely arrogant and condescending to claim to know more than the eyewitnesses do themselves, especially when the Native Americans speak of creatures that fit the modern day sightings of the Mothman. It raises some red flags that we really should pay attention to. So if this isn't a bird and it's not a guy in a costume, then what could it have been? Well, before we take a look into the legends of owls and Native American lore and legend, I want to talk about one of the creepiest things that I have ever heard of, injured cold. This entity, being, creature, or whatever you want to call it, could honestly have an entire video dedicated to itself. So I'm not going into too much detail about it, but I do want to mention it at least, since Indrid Cold was seen shortly before the Mothman made its infamous appearance. And get this, they both happened in West Virginia. Indrid Cold actually appeared two weeks before the Mothman. Indrid Cold is also referred to as the Grinning Man, due to his permanent smile he seemed to bear during all of his encounters with people. And it does need to be mentioned, Indrid Cold wasn't only seen in the United States. He was first seen on October 16, 1966, when two boys, Martin Munoff and James Yanchitis, in New Jersey, were walking on 4th Street. The boys spoke of this green one-piece suit and his unnatural grin he bore, but his most famous encounters were with a sewing machine salesman known as Woodrow Derenberger. He was driving home to Marietta, Ohio, when he noticed lights ahead of him. He believed that they belonged to the local police and pulled over only to see what he called a kerosene lamp chimney. And out of this odd structure appeared a grinning man in a one-piece suit. Derenberger said that he spoke to him telepathically and asked him to roll down his window. He asked for his name and Derenberger gave it. And then he asked for the man's name, to which he replied he was called Cold. Injured Cold. Kind of sounds like he had a James Bond thing he was going for. Good luck, Mr. Bond. James Bond. So what does this matter? 
We're talking about the Mothman, not possible alien encounters. Well, the reason I bring him up is because Indrid Cold questioned Derenberger about this odd glow off in the distance, and this city was Parkersburg, West Virginia. And this town is only about an hour away from Point Pleasant, West Virginia. So two weeks after Indrid Cold was seen in Parkers, West Virginia, the Mothman was seen an hour away in Point Pleasant, West Virginia. Coincidence? I think not! Because of this, some people believe that the two are the same or just in some way related. Now this could just be a coincidence or it could be something a bit more. What do you think? Could there be a secret connection between Indrid Cold and the Mothman of Point Pleasant? The subject of Indrid Cold is not a surface level account of some odd being. It has a wealth of information and alleged encounters. Like I said earlier, I could very well make an entire video dedicated to Indrid Cold, so let me know if that's something you want to see. There's plenty of them out there, but none for me. The possible connection that I see is that Indrid Cold unleashed the Mothman on the town and it quickly flew away and found somewhere else to be, but aside from that, I can't say that I'm sold on the idea that an alien from space came down to release a human-owl-moth hybrid to fly around and ultimately not really do anything. Would you travel 25,000 miles from your home to get to a diner just to release a fly? It isn't exactly the same kind of thing, but it's kind of the same kind of thing. To me, it's much more likely that what the original witnesses had seen was indeed much more bird-like, and when it comes to Native American legends, there's a ton of possibilities of what it could have been. The Mothman of modern legend actually matches up with historical legends of owl-type creatures. The Mothman is only known as The Mothman because of the reporter who took the name from a prominent Batman villain at the time. When the eyewitnesses were asked about it, they tend to refer to it as the big bird because it appeared more like a bird than an insect. In fact, if this creature had the anatomy like that of an insect, it would actually be incredibly small. The reason bugs never grow to be man-sized monsters is basically because there's not enough oxygen in the air. So while the name Mothman has definitely stuck and is indeed very catchy and cool, it's just very inaccurate to what people have actually seen. So if we remove the name of the creature and take the word of these first few eyewitnesses as for how it's described, we're left with a possible folkloric explanation. As many of you know, folklore is kind of like my bread and butter for this channel. So right off the bat, I already knew of at least four monsters that resemble the Mothman. The Tata Klea, the Raven Mockers, the Stikini, <clears throat> oh boy, and La Lechuza. Each of these monsters have their own weaknesses and origins, but they all have something in common. They've all subscribed and liked this video. They're all bird-based creatures. So if we ignore the name Mothman and focus on the descriptions of the monster and also the other places in the world that tell of Mothman-like creatures, what are we left with? Hundreds, if not thousands of possibilities from within folklore of what this creature actually is. Some could even argue that the Mothman is a skinwalker that's taken on the body and powers of an owl, which is why it has so much of a resemblance to one with the large eyes and all. But aside from my already established videos and knowledge of bird-human hybrid creatures, what else is there? Aliens. So I'm sure I'm going to get some flack for this in the comments because you see, Bigfoot, a 7-8 to eight foot primate in the woods of North America, I can believe that, but when it comes to aliens, it's not that I don't believe it's possible, but I don't believe that they've been here. Sorry, Mammal. I unfriend you. That's but the not how idea it works. Is that Indrid Cold has shown up shortly before the Mothman, and he released the creature on our world, which also makes it an alien. This thought process goes really deep and even ends up being connected to the sightings of goblins, but again, that could be another 20 minute video in and of itself. Because sightings of the Kentucky Goblins, Dover Demon, and Indrid Cold and its present day location are somehow all tied together through the mountains and the cave systems. I'm not going to get into that because it's so much information, but long story short, the Mothman could potentially be an alien, and even though I personally don't believe it, that doesn't mean I'm right. It very well may be something from some other world. Or maybe it's something that Native Americans have been telling stories about because it truly does sound a lot like things like the Tata Klea and Ravenmockers. So what does it seem to be to you? Is this all a case of mistaken identity of some cranes? Or is the Mothman legend something more than what we've all heard?
You let me know what you think down in the comments. And if you want to support me on Patreon, the link's in the description. Also, if you want to learn more about monsters in the US, there's a link to my recently favorite book as well. Also, I do have YouTube memberships if that's something that you want to do to support me. It's only 99 cents. Check all that out there, then check out this video here, and I'll see you there.